Good morning, this is Ron, and welcome to Storytime. And again, this is Ron. Welcome to Storytime. This is Saturday, July 8th, and we are uh, reading the, or I am reading the 48 Laws of Power, and I'm on Law 16. Use absence to increase respect and honor. Too much circulation makes the price go down. The more you are seen and heard from, the more common you appear. If you are already established in a group, temporary withdrawal from it will make you more talked about, even more admired. You must learn when to leave. Create value through scarcity. Everything in the world depends on absence and presence. A strong presence will draw power and attention to you. You shine more brightly than those around you. But a point is inevitably reached where too much presence creates the opposite effect. The more you are seen and heard from, the more your value degrades. You become a habit. No matter how hard you try to be different, subtly, without knowing why, people respect you less and less. At the right moment, you must learn to withdraw yourself before they unconsciously push you away. It is a game of hide-and-seek. The truth of this law can most easily be appreciated in matters of love and seduction, in the beginning stages of an affair. The lover's absence uh, stimulates your imagination, forming a sort of aura around him or her. But this aura fades when you know too much, when your imagination no longer has room to roam. The loved one becomes a person like anyone else, a person whose presence is taken for granted. This is why the 17th century French courtesan, uh, Ninon de Lenclos, advised constant feints at withdrawal from one's lover. Love never dies of starvation, she wrote, but often of indigestion. The moment you allow yourself to be treated like anyone else, it is too late. You're swallowed and digested. To prevent this, you need to starve the other person of your presence. Force their respect by threatening them with the possibility that they will lose you for good. Create a pattern of presence and absence. Once you die, everything about you will seem different. You will be surrounded by an instant aura of respect. People will remember their criticisms of you, their arguments with you, and will be filled with regret and guilt. They are missing a presence that will never return. But you do not have to wait until you die. By completely withdrawing for a while, you create a kind of death before death. And when you come back, it will be as if you had come back from the dead. An air of resurrection will cling to you, and people will be relieved at your return. Napoleon was recognizing the law of absence and presence when he said, If I am often seen at the theater, people will cease to notice me. Today, in a world inundated with presence through the flood of images, the game of withdrawal is all the more powerful. We rarely know when to withdraw anymore, and nothing seems private. So we are awed by anyone who is able to disappear by choice. Novelist J.D. Salinger and Thomas Pynchon have created cult-like followings by knowing when to disappear. Another more everyday side of this law, but one that demonstrates its truth even further, is the law of scarcity in the science of economics. By withdrawing something from the market, you create instant value. In 17th century Holland, the upper classes wanted to make the tulip more than just a beautiful flower. They wanted it to be a kind of status symbol. Making the flower scarce, indeed almost impossible to obtain, they sparked what was later called tulipomania. A single flower was now worth more than its weight in gold. In our own century, similarly, the art dealer Joseph Duveen insisted on making the paintings he sold as scarce and rare as possible. To keep their prices elevated and their status high, he bought up whole collections and stored them in his basement. The paintings that he sold became more than just paintings. They were fetish objects. Their value increased by their rarity. You can get all the pictures you want at $50,000 apiece. That's easy, he once said. But to get pictures at a quarter of a million apiece, that wants doing. Extend the law of scarcity to your own skills. Make what you are offering the world rare and hard to find, and you instantly increase its value. There always comes a moment when those in power overstay their welcome. We have grown tired of them, lost respect for them. We see them as no different from the rest of mankind, which is to say, say that we see them as rather worse, since we inevitably compare their current status in our eyes to their former one. There is an art to knowing when to retire. If it is done right, you regain the respect you had lost and retain a part of your power. 
The greatest ruler of the 16th century was Charles V, King of Spain, Habsburg Emperor. He governed an empire that at one point included much of Europe and the New World. Yet at the height of his power in 1557, he retired to the monastery of Justi. All of Europe was captivated by his sudden withdrawal. People who had hated and feared him suddenly called him great, and he came to be seen as a saint. In more recent times, the film actress Greta Garbo was never more admired than when she retired in 1941. For some, her absence came too soon. She was in her mid-30s, but she wisely preferred to leave on her own terms rather than waiting for her audience to grow tired of her. Make yourself too available, and the aura of power you have created around you will wear away. Turn the game around. Make yourself less accessible, and you increase the value of your presence. Now, this law only applies once a certain level of power has been attained. The need to withdraw only comes after you have established your presence. Leave too early, and you do not increase your respect. You are simply forgotten. When you are first entering into the world stage, create an image that is recognizable, reproducible and is seen everywhere. Until that status is attained, absence is dangerous. Instead of fanning the flames, it will extinguish them. In love and seduction, similarly, absence is the only effective is only effective once you have surrounded the other with your image, been seen by him or her everywhere. Everything must remind your lover of your presence so that when you do choose to be away, the lover will always be thinking of you, will always be seeing you in his or her mind's eye. Remember, in the beginning, make yourself not scarce, but omnipresent. Only what is seen, appreciated, and loved will be missed in its absence. And that was uh, Law 16, about uh, using absence to increase respect and honor. And um, I don't know, it kind of speaks for itself. There's, uh, it's another one of those laws that I suppose, again, in, when you're looking at um, creating new relationships, uh, loving relationships, then uh, this is the kind of law that would um, be applicable, I suppose. But it still seems rather manipulative, and um, so... Uh, you know, I'm, I don't know, I don't, know. I, don't um, I can understand how, you know, and I felt that way too when somebody is gone, that I miss them, but uh, I wouldn't like it if I found out they were manipulating me, if they were deliberately staying away just to make me um, excited. So a lot of the, and, and that goes with a lot of the laws here and the examples that are given about um, all these uh, various kings and queens and whatnot. And uh, they may be people that are in power but they're, they don't strike me as people that I would want to meet or that they are people that I would want uh, to be friends with. Um, and a lot of these situations are not uh, situations that I would want myself, uh, that I would want to be in uh, either, speaking again as, as far as the whole book is concerned. You know, constantly um, having to look over my shoulder and uh, be constantly worried about my power or my status. Um, I think I've got better things to do than that. So tomorrow is uh, the 9th of July, and we uh, move on to Law 17. Keep others in suspended terror. Cultivate an air of unpredictability. Humans are creatures of habit with insatiable need to see familiarity in other people's actions. Your predictability gives them a sense of control. Turn the tables. Be deliberately unpredictable. Behavior that seems to have no consistency or purpose will keep them off balance, and they will wear themselves out trying to explain your moves. Taken to an extreme, this strategy can intimidate and terrorize. And that's, again, that's on tomorrow, Sunday, um, July the 9th. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.